Spider-Man 2099 Miguel O'Hara is one of the breakout stars of the hit movie Across the Spider-Verse. We're going to give you his comics history, take a peek at some original art, and of course, dig into a mystery box of every 2099 figure in my collection. Hey y'all and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics, history, and action figures. Spider-Man 2099 has always been a personal favorite, so seeing him come into his own in Across the Spider-Verse is like a dream come true. But who exactly is the Spider-Man of the year 2099? Miguel O'Hara was created by comics legends Peter David and Rick Leonardi. While his first appearance is credited to Amazing Spider-Man 265, a five-page preview of his upcoming solo title, he actually appeared several months earlier in this triple gatefold poster in Web of Spider-Man 90. Miguel is a brilliant Irish-American geneticist working for Alchemix in Nueva York. Brash, arrogant, and condescending, he is the polar opposite to Peter Parker's reserved bookworm. When he's not belittling his co-workers, his research involves splicing DNA samples, including those of the original Spider-Man. But when one of his experiments goes horribly wrong, he quits in protest. Turns out, leaving Alchemix is not that easy. His boss spikes his drink with a synthetic drug called Rapture, a concoction so addictive, one taste and you become permanently dependent. Desperate to free himself from a lifetime bound to the alchemics produced rapture, Miguel attempts to rewrite his own genetic code. But his jilted partner corrupts the system, combining DNA profiles, including the Spider-Man one, in an attempt to thwart Miguel. Miraculously, O'Hara survives the process, although with some changes. Let's dig in here and find <laughs> my very first Spider-Man 2099 figure. So this figure was in Toy Biz's Spider-Man animated line. It actually started out with more of the animated versions, but then as the line went on, it kind of evolved into more comic versions. And this one came out in like 1997. And it's based on the Spider-Man body that actually came out the series before this that was like an Octo Spidey. But you could take all the octopus stuff off and you got this really good base Spider-Man body, and they used this 11 points of articulation body over and over again. They did Scarlet Spider, they did Ben Riley Spider-Man, they even did a Captain Universe Spider-Man on this body, so you could have a nice little collection of Spideys that all look the same. Oh, it's so good. Look at how great and how clean those paint details are, even on the Day of the Dead costume where it's like streaking down his chest. This looks so, so good. And yeah, it's simplistic articulation. There's nary a ball joint to be found anywhere, but they just did a really nice job with it. It originally came with a web cape, but over the past 25 years, that's just been lost. But I really love this. And for a first Spidey 2099 figure, that's pretty daggum good. Now, the next one that came out was another basic repaint. So this is the Spider-Man Classics Spidey 2099 that came in the Spidey Classics line that was the, the thing that came before Marvel Legends. So Spidey Classics started in the year 2000. This was a 2001 KB Toys exclusive. And you can see it utilizes the exact same figure as the original Spider-Man Classics toy, which is still awesome. I mean, it completely works. He doesn't even have like the cut bicep. I guess that was like the second version of the figure because I think the first one might have had a, a bicep cut. But he's got articulated fingers so that he can make thwippy sort of hands. And he did come with his airfoil cape that allows him to kind of soar through the futuristic city of Nueva York. Uh, and I managed to keep that and it just sort of attaches around his neck. The coloring, it's not quite as dark maybe as I would like. And so the red you can almost kind of see the blue kind of bleeding through some of the red on this paint, but still for another figure that's on a terrific frame. I mean, this is this is the progenitor of all modern Marvel Legends is the Spider-Man Classics body. So I just, I completely love it. Now, Toy Biz lost the license to Hasbro, but Hasbro did do some smart things at the beginning of their run. One of them was continuing a line of figures called Spider-Man Origin. So now we're up to the six inch scale and they kind of 
reissued some of the old Toy Biz figures, and then they repainted others. And this is their version of 2099. Now, one of the things I like better, look at how much deeper this blue is, which makes the red really shine off of it. And speaking of shine, they went with this blue metallic paint that you can really see come through on this video. They also went with kind of a bigger web cloth back here, and it sort of has the bungee cords that fit around the elbows and around the neck. Now, he has some funky articulation because you've got pretty good ball joints at the shoulders, but then the torso is like pre-sculpted in this kind of forward pose. And then, of course, you get virtually nothing at these T-jointed hips. So it's kind of, I mean, this is, you know, this is coming out in like 2006. We're, we're well into Marvel Legends at this point, but they went with this sort of older body that they just repainted. But this was our first Hasbro 6-inch Spidey 2099 figure. Coming back to Miguel's origin, he now finds himself with talons on his hands and feet, enhanced senses, organic web shooters in his forearms, and those fangs, which release a poisonous venom. He grabs an old costume from a Mexican Day of the Dead celebration and leaps into action to protect his own tail. See, Miguel isn't motivated as much by great power causing great responsibility as initially just his own selfish interest. Don't worry, he'll evolve over the course of the series. Around 2010, Hasbro pivoted away from six inch figures and converted their line to more of a three and three quarter, four inch scale with the Marvel Universe line. And thankfully, we were able to get a gorgeous 2099 in that line. Now it's hard to get this level of detail that's involved in Miguel's costume on a figure this small, but they really did it. He's on kind of the standard thin athletic frame. And again, you can see they got, see if I can get it to focus. They got the mask details really, really right. And of course he has the first kind of plastic web cape. And I think that looks really good. It has a good flow to it. You can see the web lines etched in. Of course he has the articulation that this line came to be known for. It's not perfect. The proportions aren't perfect, but for a four inch scale figure is pretty good. And they went with more of the metallic paint, which is one that I really love. And I think brings that futuristic aspect to Miguel's costume. Let's go even smaller with Mini Mates. Yes. So Mini Mates took a shot at Spidey 2099. And I would say they did an even better job of getting tight paint applications going. You can see the, the skull on his chest, even the effects down his arms with the little pointed uh, triangle on his hand. But look at how good they did with wrapping that great facial paint around those square heads. Mine's missing a hand, and of course it's a special hand because it's not just a blue one, so I've got to find that. But if you're a fan of Mini Mates, I've done several videos on them lately. Check them out because this is one of the best lines of Marvel toys that we've ever gotten. But then there is one other smaller type of figure, and that is, yes, the Funko Pop. And I have tried to be very, very selective with my pop purchases. But when I saw Miguel, I knew that he just basically, he had to come home with me. And this is really kind of what Funko Pops, I think, are all about. They get some characters, they get some licenses that you're not going to see anywhere else. And that's actually kind of awesome. So here's to the 2099 Funko Pop. There was a ton of world building necessary in the 2099 universe. Artist Rick Leonardi created entire cityscapes filled with manga-inspired flying cars. But the most lasting creation was Miguel's holographic assistant, Lila, whose appearance was based on Marilyn Monroe and went on to become a star in Across the Spider-Verse. Arguably the most fully realized of any of the Spider-Man 2099 figures is the Mezco 112 edition. So Mezco makes these six inch figures in cloth costumes and they take a little bit of liberties with some of the design. You can see there's a little bit of extra red kind of along this, but they still create a really classic look. And this one is particularly special because they really get that tech look to the figure down. I mean, it has this great head with this applied pattern to it. And that kind of sets it apart from just kind of the sticky pattern that comes on the rest of the costume. 
He has a terrific web wing back here, but this figure was actually a Mezco exclusive. It came in a pretty sweet package, and you can see it's got the gold foil there as a Mezco exclusive. But when you take it out and look at all of the accessories that came with it, you've got several extra heads. You've got the open mask head, which is the first time we really see Miguel's fangs. you got the only unmasked Miguel head. Of course you have multiple hands with all the talons, but you also get the wrist bracelets. And let's actually look at some of these different accessories and see exactly why this figure really stands apart from the rest. So I've switched this over to the Miguel head, and it's a pretty good representation of what Miguel O'Hara looks like in the comics. But as you can see, the real highlight here is he comes with a holographic Lila. And she is absolutely based on her Marilyn Monroe stylings, the way Rick Leonardi drew it in the original issues. It's really cool. You get a, a wrist bracelet here that either comes with the hologram of Lila, or you can just have one without. But this is the first time that we've gotten her in action figure form, and I think it really adds to the character and to the detail of this very, very pricey figure. And as we mentioned earlier, this is the only figure that's given us a look at Miguel's fangs. They're a little bit subtle, but they're definitely there, and he's, he's you know, they made a hint of this in Across the Spider-Verse, and I wonder if this power is something that we're going to see more of in part two beyond the Spider-Verse. Another cool thing about this figure, though, is that his web cape actually does have underwire on the ends, so you can get it into some really cool flying poses, so it doesn't just hang, hang down loosely. You can actually pose with it, but this figure with the three heads and, of course, all the details and Lila may just be the best 2099 figure that we've seen. Hey, if this combination of comics, history, and action figures is for you, give this video a like and consider subscribing to Carbon Scoring. We are coming at you every week with unique takes on the characters that we all love. Eventually, Miguel begins to embrace his powers, using them to fight for the ordinary people against the mega corporations of his day. Sadly, the Marvel 2099 universe flamed out pretty quickly, with only 46 issues of the original title produced. However, I got to meet artist and co-creator Rick Leonardi at the 2013 Heroes Con in Charlotte, where he drew this super cool sketch for me. He also had a stack of original art for sale, and I found the double-page spread of Spider-Man Fighting Venture from issue 25. Come on, you didn't think we forgot about Marvel Legends, did you? Well, Hasbro almost did because this incredible Spider-Man 2099 figure actually didn't come out until 2015. So that was about, you know, almost 15 years after the Spider-Man Classics version, and really nine years after the one that we saw in the Spider-Man Origins line. But let me tell you, it was fully worth the wait. This is still my definitive Marvel Legends Miguel O'Hara figure. I love the blue metallic paint. He does have his web wing. It fits on both of the Marvel Legends figures, so I'm just going to put it on here. I've, I have a few of these, and some of them have lost their wings over time, but I love how it, it flows, and you can actually kind of have it swooping different ways. They went the extra mile and sculpted fingers that have some talons on them. So he's got a little bit of sharpness to his fingers there. But it's really just the way that this blue and red splash off each other that make this so awesome. So this was in the uh, Hobgoblin, the first Hobgoblin Build-A-Figure wave. And it just, I don't think enough people got it. I think that Marvel Legends were still kind of trying to climb out of the depths at that point. And so thankfully... Hasbro reissued the figure on a retro card back, and they're very similar. I mean, they have, you know, almost the exact same body, but this newer one doesn't have the metallic paint. It's, it's still shiny. You can still see how it kind of shines, but it's a little bit flatter. And the chest symbol, the skull on his chest is definitely different. It's a little bit smaller. Let's pull this one back up and you can see the difference. So here the original 2015 version versus the 2020 version. This skull is much larger, and I think it looks much better. Plus, I think that the red really pops off of this figure more than it does off of the matte coloring of this one. But I'm so glad that people were able to get this great figure into their collection if they missed it the first time. 
But these aren't the only Marvel Legends Miguel O'Hara figures that were made. In 2017, in the build in the Sandman build a figure wave, we got this version of M Miguel's newer suit. Now, I'm just going to have to be honest. I didn't read this storyline, and this was during a time of life where I was I was picking up Marvel Legends, but I wasn't paying that much attention. And this guy sat in a box because I actually thought it was just a video game design. I didn't realize that this was actually Miguel for a number of years. I think until I watched somebody else's video and they pointed it out. It's pretty cool. I mean, you know, the red and the black and the white do look pretty cool together. But And, and it's got some shiny metallic to it. But it still looks more like a video game to me. And the classic uniform is just so perfect. And what Rick Leonardi did with that design just was so great. This is always going to be just kind of a, a second place kind of forgotten costume as far as I'm concerned for Spider-Man 2099. After the demise of the 2099 universe, Miguel was out of comics for a while. But fortunately, he was picked up in other media, including the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, which gave us its own version of the Spider-Verse, including this sweet CGI future. Miguel was also one of the four main playable characters in the 2010 Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions game. I didn't really watch the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, but when I saw this guy sitting on the pegs at Target, I knew that it was an automatic buy. So this is your classic kids 5 POA figure. Uh, he's obviously got a little bit of a, a play mechanism there. His arm swings up. I don't know what I've done, if I've broken it or not. But um, he, you know, again, it's the colors. This This has much more of a royal blue, which again sets off against the red. And truly, it's a very classic version of Miguel's suit. His mask is such a huge part of this, but they did a great job of capturing it. He's got his little web wings here on the side. But the version from other media that we've really got to take a look at is this 12-inch Hot Toys figure from the Shattered Dimensions video game. Holy cow. This thing is unreal. You can see all of the little mesh details. It even comes down to his hands. There's even the mesh like sewn in on his hands. Of course, the talons are present on both hands, but where it really stands out is the application of the details of his costume. Look at that brow furrowed down all around these eyepieces and the plastic that's on top of this bendable material. Now, this is a figure that I don't really mess with a whole lot because I'll get him into kind of an awesome pose and then I'll get him up on a stand in the secret lounge and that's about it because I'm afraid that this plastic may come off at some point. You can see, look at the details of his back muscles and the different materials of the costume there. But I don't want this to start peeling away from kind of the rubbery suit underneath. So far, so good. I mean, this thing has been out for probably three years now and it still looks absolutely brand new, but it is a total piece of art. And I just, I love this 12 inch version of Miguel O'Hara. One of the more remarkable aspects to Across the Spider-Verse is that each character has their own animation style. Miguel's look incorporates the scratchy, sawtooth inking style of the comic's original inker, Al Williamson. And we are on to Across the Spider-Verse. And so I went with my kids on opening night for the premiere, and I went ahead and I said, I asked them if they had any kind of specials. They're like, well, we have the popcorn and drink special. I'm like, I'll have that. So I got a giant tub of popcorn and a large Pepsi. And they said, well, what drink topper do you want? I said, well, what are my choices? And they said, Miles Gwynn or 2099. So I obviously jumped all over Spidey 2099. Unfortunately, it came broken. You can see if I touch it too much, it's going to fall off, but the head is about to come off. But I sucked down like 60 ounces of Pepsi just to get this bad boy, but it's, it's pretty sweet. Then we have the two figures that I have thus far from Across the Spider-Verse. This came in a Target six-pack of figures that has like kind of the seven points of articulation. He doesn't have any real knee bend, but this is a little bit different than the main retail release because it's a clear translucent plastic and it looks so good. It really brings out the tech aspects of his costume. And this costume is one where Sometimes they're able to do things better as we go along. I really like how they accentuated these kind of bat wings over here. They're like Batman's little 
points that he has out, but bringing him out really kind of brings a whole new texture and kind of ominousness to him. They simplified the mask a little bit. It doesn't have some of the little legs coming off, but it's still very clearly a definitive Spider-Man 2099 mask. You don't ever look at that and think that it's something else. But the pinnacle is the new Marvel Legends. Now, here again, they have the more simplified mask, and they do have kind of that animated look to the shape of the head, which is awesome. He's really broad. He almost has the proportions of like a Bruce Timm Batman the Animated Series character with such broad, broad shoulders tapering down to narrow hips and then tiny little ankles, which is such a sweet look. Again, you've got the big wings here, but this one with the Marvel Legends, they gave us the web wing and they put a nice gradiated pattern on it where it starts like really red and comes all the way down to clear. That looks so good. But where the designers and the artists of Across the Spider-Verse really crushed it is by changing the chest symbol. So before the origin was Miguel was wearing a Day of the Dead costume. And, you know, here's kind of our best example of that. And it's really more of a skull. You can see it has a little bit of a spider motif, but that's clearly a skull. Here, the artist turned the skull portion into the abdomen of the spider and made this much more of a spider coming down the front of his costume. And that's a change that I think absolutely works and really benefits the character and makes this even better. Now, we're going to get some import figures. I've got like an SH Figure Arts already on pre-order. I'm hoping that both Mafex and Sentinel produce six-inch figures for this line. That would be great. The figures that Sentinel produced for Into the Spider-Verse are some of the finest action figures made. So hopefully we'll get more and more versions. There's also a Hot Toys version that I haven't decided if I'm going to pull the trigger on because you can see all of the joints. It's not really a costume the way that, you know, a cloth costume the way that most Hot Toys are. But you know what? It's Spidey 2099. It's Miguel O'Hara. I'm almost certainly going to go ahead and buy it. So what do you guys think? Was Miguel one of your favorite parts of Across the Spider-Verse? Do you want to see more of him? Where do you think his story is going to go from here? And as always, for the best in comics history and action figures, subscribe to Carbon Scoring.